Hi, welcome back. I'm Paula Harvey from Tahoe Ranch Conservancy. And today we are going to work on part two of lesson three. So we're gonna review quickly what lesson two part one was. You can't do part two without having done part one. So we'll do a quick review of what we've already done and then move on to complete part two. So today what you're going to need is your journal and a pencil. And I recommend that the next part, which is the reflection, you're going to do on the pages after the journal entry because you're gonna be doing a lot of writing this time. Okay, so now you've worked with a partner and tested your skills in journaling, and now we're going to do a very deep reflection. So in this section, you're going to finish that journal entry about plants by answering questions that you have, um, that I'm asking you. So just to review, these are the different plants. You are to choose one of these photos and to study it as carefully as you possibly can. Certainly not as good as being out in the field to do it, but um, it still will work. You look at it, you write, I notice, I wonder, this reminds me of, and then you'll do some metrics which will, are not going to be true measurements. But for example, if you look at uh, plant number five, you'll see that those leaves are opposite leaves in that cluster. And you could say something like that. Another reminder that the metadata, the heading, is part of that one, two, three part of your journal. And then um, you are going to sketch or diagram one of these one of these photos. Okay, so we'll move on now to the reflection. I'm going to give you six questions that I'm going to ask you to answer. You want to answer each of these questions in a complete sentence, and then after we've got these six questions answered, we're going to combine them and put them into one big meaningful paragraph. You're going to use question answer form in answering each of these questions. So what is question answer form? Question answer form is just simply using as many words in your answer that were in the question. And the simple example of that is if I were to ask, what state do you live in? You would say, the state I live in is California. Now normally if we're just having a conversation, if I said, which state do you live in? You would say, California. But in this case, I want you to write it in question answer form. So notice I underline in the example state and live in because in the answer, state and live in are part of the question and the answer. That's question answer form. So here's the first reflection question. What are some details that helped your partner find your plant? Now, if your partner didn't find your plant, what were some of the details that your partner used trying to find your plant? And notice that in the answer, and I'm giving you a sentence frame to start with, in the sentence frame answer, notice those words that are underlined. It's the same as the words in the top. Details that helped partner find and plant. Details that help partner find and plant. So the answer to the question, what were some details that helped your partner find your plant, starts with the details that helped my partner find my plant were. What I want you to do now on your reflection page, which is gonna be separate from the journal page because we have a lot of these questions to do. I want you to write the beginning of that sentence frame, the details that helped my partner find my plant were, and then answer the question. Pause this video while you take time to think about and answer the question. And once it's done, move on to the next slide. Okay, so you're probably done with number one and we're gonna go on to number two. And the question is, were there any details you wished you had included in your journal? And the sentence frame that starts question answer form is, the details I wished I had included in my journal were, notice how many of those words are underlined because you used them in both the question and the answer. Go ahead and pause this video 
and think about the question and then answer it. Okay, reflection number three. What kinds of details might be helpful to record in future journal entries? And the question answer form starts with the kinds of details that might be helpful to record in future journal entries are. Think about the question and then write it. Now notice I'm always saying think about the question. Take a couple of minutes to really think about what is being asked? And as you're thinking about it, come up with those answers. Maybe more than one answer, maybe more than one idea. So take your time, pause the video, write a good answer. Number four. Now, notice a little difference on the slide because it starts with NGSS cross cutting concept patterns. There are certain questions that we use to dive into some scientific concepts. And one of the scientific concepts is, when you look at a lot of different things, what kinds of patterns do you see within what you're studying? And so that's what we're looking for right now. In question number four, what patterns can you see in the plant that you studied? Now, some ideas. Think about forms of growth, branching, the leaf shape, the leaf color, the leaf arrangement, alternate, spiral, opposite, or world, those are leaf arrangements. Think about what kinds of patterns you're seeing, the veins, whatever, take a look. You may have to go back and, and look again, one, in your drawing, in your journal, but also in the photographs at the beginning of this lecture, at this PowerPoint. So to start the answer, you would say, the patterns I can see in the plant I studied were and then start listing some of those patterns, All right? Pause the video, think very hard about this one, think very scientifically about this one, and come back on when you're done with the answer. Okay, number five. Now, the, the science concept for number five is cause and effect. Something happened that caused something else to happen. That was the effect. Um, that's not only in science, that is in just about everything. So take a look at this question. Look at the unique features that you recorded on your plant, like holes, spots, tears, shapes, unexpected patterns of growth. What might have caused some of these features to occur? It's a very complex question. The way you start the answer is the unique feature, name that feature, that occurred on this plant might have been caused by, and then answer that question. Go back to your pictures, go back to your drawings, go back to your I notice and I wonder, and answer this question. And here's the last question. This concept is structure and function, another scientific um, concept that we study in science. So pick an interesting structure or part of the plant that you drew in your journal. How might its shape, texture, or other feature help it function in its environment? For example, what do thorns do on a cactus? That would be what's its purpose. All right, and here's how to start that answer. An interesting structure of the plant is, and then name it, its feature, again, name it, might help it function in its environment by, and then tell us what, what that function might be. How might that help that plant to survive? All right, again, take lots of time, really think about this question, study your notes, and then write your answer. Put this on pause. Here are all the questions again, all together. So if you need more time, you can go back and look at all the questions that you have. Remember to do them in question answer form. And there's a reason for that because you're about to take all of those questions, combine them in a way that makes sense and create a six sentence paragraph. In fact, it's gonna be an eight sentence paragraph. And then you will have done a lot of work on everything that you learned. But hopefully, 
having done the journal will have inspired you to talk a lot about it. So this is your chance to really reflect on what you've learned as you were doing your journal entry. So here's what you're going to do. First of all, review all the questions and answers that you just went through, and then figure out if you took those questions and you mix them up or move them around, what would be the best order for those six questions, in order for them to make sense and for them to kind of lead from one question to the next and not just be a jumble that you throw together and say, that's a paragraph. Really adjust it so that it makes sense. And then while you're doing that, number each of those answers. So the one that you think should be the first sentence, put a one by it. The one that you think should be the second sentence, put a two by it and so on until you get all six. Then write an introductory sentence, something that starts the entire paragraph, just comes right off of your head. Maybe it's a review of what you did. And then connect those answers together by writing them in a paragraph in the order that you chose. And then end with a finishing sentence that closes the whole thing up. So it might look something like this. In this assignment, this is my opening sentence. In this assignment, I journaled about one plant, then had a partner review my journal to figure out which plant I studied. That's the first sentence. Now here are the answers to the others. The details that helped my partner find my plant were, the details I wish I had included in my journal were, the kinds of details that might be helpful to record in the future journal entries are. The patterns I can see in the plant I studied were, the unique features, and you name those features, that occurred on this plant might have caught, been caused by, for example, if it was a hole, it might have been a, an insect eating the, the leaf. Uh, an interesting structure of the plant is, and then we're looking at patterns and structures and cause and effect. Its feature, I'm gonna name it, might help it function in its environment by, and then you're gonna finish with a, with, with a, a final sentence. And here's mine. This was a challenging assignment and I plan on adjusting my next journal entry using the ideas I learned from this one. Now, you can't use my first and last sentence. You have to come up with your own. But this is an example of why, what your paragraph might look like. It's a long eight sentence paragraph and it's chucky jam full of good, interesting stuff. So there you go. You're going to put it together now. Go ahead and pause the video while you work on this paragraph. And this should be your next journal page. So you're done. You're now an expert at question answer form. You're an expert in combining ideas to make a meaningful paragraph. Now, remember there's lots and lots of different ways to write a reflection. Remember we talked about writing a poem. I showed you an example of that in the journal samples. You could write a, a diary entry. You could write a list of the things that you want to do next time. It's endless the things you could do. But one of the things that may happen is your teacher may say, I want you to answer the following questions. And if that's the case, you know now how to do that. So thanks for joining me. Bye for now. I look forward to seeing you with lesson four. Bye.